Good morning. I'm not excited the reason I'm up here today with Rodney having pain and having an obvious kidney stone attack and uh, him going to the hospital this morning. We want to pray and continue to feel about him. But I am excited because we get to open up the Word of God and talk about that today. I brought paddles with me. I know that I feel like we're with this rush, David. <laughs> Were you rushing to cover for Rodney? But, uh, we're swimming upstream, so I brought paddles. Uh, so, help a little bit. The story is told of an old Scotchman that operated a rowboat that carried passengers. One day a passenger noticed that on one of the paddles, the the the, the rowboat operator had the word faith carved on the oar. And he noticed he looked at the other oar that he had and the word works was on the other oar. Of course, the passenger was interested in this concept, so he inquired. And the man said, well, I'll explain. So he picked up the, the oar that had works on it and he started pulling and the boat out in the water started going in circles. And then he laid that oar down and he went and picked up the one that said faith. And he picked that oar up and he began to pull on that oar. As he pulled on that oar, the boat went in circles in the other direction. Then he began to, then he said, uh, he grabbed the, the two oars and he began to pull on them both at the same time. And the boat then went swiftly and safely across the water using both oars. So the old man began to explain. You see, that's the way it is in the Christian life. Dead works without faith are useless. Faith without works is dead also, getting you nowhere. But faith and works pulling together make for safety, progress, and blessing. What a great reading. Thank you, Matthew, for James chapter 2, and if you would open your Bibles to that scripture, James chapter 2, most of our discussion will be related or anchored there in James chapter 2. Beginning with verse 14. What profit, my brethren, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of us says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body. What does it profit? There is the desire, is it not? Even you may have had the desire in this time of year, cold, rainy, snowy, uh, dangerously cold, to help a rescue mission, to help someone that doesn't have clothes. They're, I know I'm aware of a house that burnt recently, and those people do not have a house anymore. Uh, those people need clothing, shelter, food. There are many situations you know of, people without heat, without electricity. There's that desire to say, I want to help them, and I desire to help them, or I have faith someone will help them. Is that faith, or that belief, or that desire enough to get them what they need? One scripture, if you would, keep your finger at uh, James chapter 2 and turn to Luke chapter 3. Luke 3, beginning in verse 8. Luke 3, 8. Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance, and do not begin to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children to Abraham from these stones. Even now the axe is laid to the root of the trees. Where Therefore every tree which does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said to them, He who has two tunics, or coats, let him give to him who has none. Let, and he who has food, let him do likewise. The tax collectors also came to be baptized and said to him, Teacher, what shall we do? And he said to them, Collect no more than what's appointed for you. Likewise, the soldiers asked him, saying, what shall we do? He said to them, Do not intimidate anyone or accuse falsely or be con and be content with your wages. 
You see, even these people, they're coming to Jesus, they're hearing his teaching, they're coming to be baptized, they're coming to be followers of him, and then they're asking, well, what do we do? What are the things that we do to follow you? What are the things that we do to show faith in you? What are the things that, that causes us to be one of your followers? Followers. Someone has a coat, then you supply that. If you're a tax collector, as a Christian, you collect no more than what's due to be collected. And we know from the tax collector history and, and as given in the Bible, many abuse the privileges of tax collecting. The Christian tax collector does not. Even the soldiers that's coming to follow Jesus don't do like a lot of the other soldiers do. You're intimidating people. You're falsely accusing people. You don't do that as a Christian soldier. But you do your duties as you should. But then you do not intimidate or accuse falsely. And you be content with the wages that you're paid. There's standards that start coming about as we study some of these scriptures that let us know that if you have faith, if you have belief, if you have the desire to follow Jesus, there's some things that goes along with that. And there's some lifestyles that goes along with that. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, please. 2 Corinthians chapter 7. Verses 8 beginning. For even if I made you sorry with my letter, as Paul addresses the situation here at the Corinthian church, he says, I do not regret it, though I did regret it, for I perceive that the same epistle made you sorry, though only for a while. Now I rejoice not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. For you were made sorry in a godly manner, that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow, notice this word, produces, produces repentance leading to salvation. Not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. For observe this very thing, that you sorrowed in a godly manner, what diligence it produced in you. What clearing of yourselves, what indignation, what fear, what vehement desire, what zeal, what vindication. In all things, you proved yourselves to be clear in this matter. In the belief of God, in the following of God, it's the things that produces that makes the difference. It's not the statement that I love God. It's not the statement I believe in God. Those are important and those are critical. We know confession of Christ. We know the acknowledgement of Christ is the beginning of the faith. But then the faith that's complete is the faith that goes on to demonstrate, to produce, to cause, to make things happen so that others, people's needs are met and Christians are taught from your works from your desires and from your love. There's love and demonstration in 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. Beginning with verse 16. Love is demonstrated here. By this we know, by this we know love, because he laid down his life for us. We also ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. Whoever has this world's goods and sees his brother in need and shuts up his heart from him, how does the love of God abide in him? Notice it's the heart that is shut. It's not just the works you do or don't do something. It's the heart that produces those works. And when you shut the heart down and you shut the feelings down and you shut the intent down, then it shuts the works down. See, it works together. Whoever has this world's goods, again, and sees his brother in need, shuts up his heart from him. How does the love of God abide in him? My little children, let us not in love in word or in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by this we know that we are of the truth, and we shall assure our hearts before him. Jesus laid down his life for us. He shared with us everything that he possibly could share. He was full of deeds and full of truth. So, that, so he wants us to be. Now back to our original scripture, James chapter 2. 
beginning in verse, picking up at 17. Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. But some of them will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there's one God, you do well. Even the demons believe and tremble. But do you, but do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? I understand that those that proclaim often were asked to show our faith and were given opportunities. A lot of those were talked about in our class this morning. That we have opportunities to give, to do, and to help others, and to help the Lord's church, then the question comes, as they say from Missouri, show me. Show me. James chapter 3, verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. Now Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, 1 through 10. Love is demonstrated here. Brethren, if a man is overtaken in any trespass, and you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Bear you one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks himself to be something, when he's nothing, he deceives himself. But let each examine his own work, and then he will have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For each one shall bear his own load. Let him who has taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man sows, that will he also reap. He who sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. He who sows to the Spirit will of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. Notice the action words that's in this scripture, verse 1. We talk about restoring brethren. Verse 2, we talk about bearing burdens. Verse 5, we talk about bearing a load. Verse 6, we talk about sharing. Verse 7, we talk about sowing and reaping. Verse 9, we talk about not growing weary. And number 10, we talk about taking the opportunity. Action, 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 action. Works, works, works. But they're with the faith that causes them to happen. The faith that causes you to want to do those works. They work together. The boat will not go across the water with one. It'll go in circles to the left, it'll go in circles to the right, but it not, does not get to its destination until the, the, the two pull together. Just recognizing that Jesus is Christ, recognizing Him as Lord in your life is not enough. James chapter 2 and 19, even the demons knew Christ. Even they acknowledged who Christ was. When Christ went to, to uh, cast demons out of people at, at more than one time, the demons knew him by name. So acknowledging Christ or knowing who he is is not enough. It takes the works that goes with the, the acknowledgement of Jesus. James 2 again, our anchor of scripture, verse 21. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? Do you see that faith was working together? Again, do you see that faith was working together with his works? And by works, faith was made perfect. It can only be perfect, it can only be complete when Abraham had the faith and he had to have the faith that God would give him that son in the old age. And he had to have the faith that when God told him to move his cattle, his family, his kindred, his sheep, his tents, his servants, 
that God, and, and, and the Bible says that he went and he moved, not knowing where he was going, but see he had faith in God, that God would lead him. And those works was a result of that faith. Faith in God by itself, is it valuable? Have you ever told somebody I'm praying for you and then not pray for them? I've been guilty of that. My intention is good. I'm sincere when I say it. But did I go home and pray? Did I give a fervent prayer for that situation I said I would? I'm going to come to see you. Have you ever said in your lifetime, uh, less than a million times, I'm coming to see you. Come see us. Well, we, it's a colloquial expression we do in the South, maybe. Maybe, I don't know if it does any, anywhere else or not, but do we mean it? Are we coming to see them? Do we intend to see them? Our words and our works needs to go together. Have you ever heard somebody say, well, I'm going to call you? And you wait, and you wait, and you wait. Do they call you? Or do you say, I'm going to call you? And don't, and don't? I'm guilty of all. See the faith, the intention, the sincerity doesn't get it done. It's the beginning. But then it takes the work with it. Have you ever give a gift and then you had spiteful feelings with it? You really didn't want to give it? Have you ever done a deed just because you wanted to return the favor you felt obligated? Have you done a work just so you didn't feel guilty that you weren't doing anything? And you just participated in the work just so that you felt better about yourself? Well, their works, but the faith wasn't with them. So then you don't get the, the credit for the work isn't the same. It's like David said this morning, uh, he made a comment about money. The money doesn't care. The money doesn't know what it's doing. But it's the person that does with it. That's where the help is being done. Let me show you a story out of the Double Springs Bulletin. This was overheard in a Sunday school class, supposedly. The teacher says to the class, if I sell my house and my car and I have a big garage sale and give all my money to the church, will that get me to heaven? And the kid said, no. So the teacher goes on, if I clean the church building every day, if I mow the yard, if I keep everything neat and tidy, will that get me into heaven? The children says, no. Well then, if I treat animals kindly, and if I give treats to all the children, and if I love my wife, will that get me into heaven? Children says, no. Well then, tell me, how do I get into heaven? And one brave five-year-old boy says, you got to be dead. There's no reward without the faith, without the death. Without the end, there's not the new beginning. He had it, didn't he? He understood. The long answer to the teacher's question is, one must die to self in order to live exclusively for Christ. But you've got to die to do it. You've got to be dead to yourself. You've got you to be dead to those things that try to pull you aside. You gotta be dead to the things that the devil offers that we so often take up. But in order to receive the reward, we must be dead to sin. It takes faith, it takes works. Do you have need to change your life today? Do you have need that you need to be baptized? and admit that God is the ruler of your soul, but also you're willing to work the rest of your life until your death to be with him. Do you have a need because you've been short on the things that you're doing as a Christian, that you need the help from the church, that you need prayers for the church? Then you could come this morning. Let the beauty of Jesus be seen in you while we sing.